Good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kudlow. Welcome back to the Kudlow Report, where we still believe free market capitalism is the best path to prosperity. Topic A tonight is Apple. Profits, profits, profits. Apple reported blowout earnings after the bell today, nearly doubling its profits for the first quarter. That sent Apple after hours shares soaring. This comes as CEO Steve Jobs announced his health-related leave of absence. Plus, more news after the bell. Tech giant IBM reported its strongest quarterly revenue growth in almost a decade. Now, I've always said profits are the mother's milk of stocks and the economy. And stocks rose again today, extending a seven-week rally. This leading indicator of the economy has a message here. We are healing. All right, let's get some reaction from our distinguished panel. We have CNBC contributor Don Luskin, <laughs> chief investment officer at Trend Macro, Michael Pento, senior economist at Euro Pacific Capital, and Thomas Belisis, CEO of John Thomas Financial. Don Luskin, you're a silicon kind of, a, kind of guy. Walk me through oh, yeah. the Apple story on profits. We're going to do the Steve Jobs story later in the show. But tell me about Apple profits. Tell me about technology profits. And tell me about technology as an investment, up or down. Well, technology's been the cyclical sector that was first to get back to peak earnings. It's been back at peak earnings for like nine months. It's leading the whole American economy out of this recession. It's just fantastic. Apple has come out of nowhere. It's also thanks to Steve Jobs, which is why it's so uh, frightening to think of him leaving. It's become the second largest market cap company in the world. In this last quarter, it managed not only to sell a record number of iPads, which isn't that hard since it's only been around for three quarters, they sold a record number of Macintosh computers, and those have been around for 25 years. It's absolutely amazing and you know we're a golden gut a guy who understands what the public wants and can have these amazing breakthrough products i think the company is going to be weaker without him but his health problems are very very well known this is not a surprise and so even though the stock traded down pre-opening in europe even before this big earnings uh, blowout happened it only closed down less right. than two percent on the day back. so it's like you know i mean look nobody lives forever i wish steve jobs would but nobody does all right tom blesis let me ask you this regarding apple regarding ibm big numbers how much of a boost is it going to give the market tomorrow and thereafter but i want to add as a little bit of an addendum a lot of these big tech companies like microsoft and intel and cisco have just broken hearts they have not moved in 10 or 12 years so regarding market leadership and regarding the market's direction how do you regard this news well i think apple is just another case of reasons to be bullish i mean let's look at the market in general as a whole i mean we're approaching major highs on the s p mid cap index we're approaching highs on the Nasdaq 100. I mean, it's been at the highest level since February of 2001. I mean, companies have run their businesses lean and mean. I got to give a lot of credit to these CEOs because they've done a damn good job running these companies, you know, during the downturn. And now we're seeing evidence of great earnings. And I think more earnings to follow are going to come in in a very big way. All right, Michael Pento, before we turn to our man, John Ford, I want to get your take. Now, I know Apple and IBM and tech is not gold, so it's a little <laughs> bit of a different area for you. A little bit, yeah. But how do you read this? Let's say in terms of the economy's earnings trajectory, earnings are the mother's milk of stocks. You've heard that before. Right. How do you see it? Well, Apple and other tech stocks may use less raw materials, so they may profit a little bit more. But because, why, because, because they're not using and not energy intensive, so they don't, not using base metal. So yeah, so they can right exactly. But why not invest in a company that actually produces these raw materials, so you can get the full effect of the inflation that Ben Bernanke is providing you? You're not buying tech, is that what you're telling? Uh, me? I I I own some foreign tech companies, absolutely. Foreign, yeah, tech. not outside not America. based, not they derive their earnings and revenue from foreign sources. All right, let's go to Silicon Valley. Let's go to our man, CNBC reporter, John Fort, who has been listening in on the conference calls with some additional details. John, what can you tell us that we don't already know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, Larry, but Nothing. here's an interesting detail. Apple sold a record 16.24 million iPhones in the quarter, but still wasn't able to make enough to meet demand. And demand's only getting stronger with the company's announcement last week that it'll begin offering the iPhone to Verizon's 93 million subscribers. And that was 
was the most significant piece of news in a very upbeat earnings call. Revenue at $26.74 billion, more than $2 billion better than consensus. Earnings per share at $6.43, more than a buck better than the experts predicted. Gross margins were 38.5%, better than Apple guided. The stock ticked up after hours, as you mentioned, recovering most of the loss it suffered when uh, Steve Jobs announced an indefinite medical leave yesterday. And Larry, you'll like this. Apple's cash and long-term investments now total $60 billion. Mm. There's a lot you can do with that. Now, Apple's big earnings beat came from strong iPhone, Mac, and iPad sales. The iPhone number was half a million units better than expected. The iPad was more than a million better. iPad alone brought in $4.4 billion in revenue. Now, IBM also reported a strong quarter across the board, revenue of $29 billion, EPS of 418, both better than expected. IBM also gave full year EPS guidance of 13 a share, uh, 13 bucks a share. That's better than the street was looking for, Larry. All right, John Ford, thank you very much. Let's return to our distinguished panel. I want to go to Don Luskin. Don, what's your take about earnings in general? There's a lot of people, maybe a lot of professionals now, who are waiting for the big correction in the sky, and everybody seems rather uh, uh, optimistic, but I see a lot of uh, gloom and doom out there underneath some leading hedge fund managers, not least of whom is my friend Dougie Cass. What is your earnings estimate, and won't earnings ultimately drive this uh, stock market in 2011? You got it exactly right, Larry. Earnings are the mother's milk of the stock market and the economy. We are in an amazing situation right now. We're only 7.5% away from all-time high forward S&P operating earnings. We're only 10% away from all-time high trailing earnings. We're only 3% away from all-time high top-line revenues. We are going to just drift up to those levels sometime within the next three to six months. And when we do, there's no good reason why the stock market shouldn't be making new all-time highs. That's why we are right now in a slow-motion melt-up, and I do not believe for one second that there's an excessive amount of optimism out there. Everybody I talk to has got some reason, they've got some story, some systemic risk, some end-of-the-world tale to say, miss this, to stay out of this. They just don't realize this isn't 2008 can, anymore. This isn't 2009 I, I anymore. This is 2011, Don, and the world has I, gotten better. Yes, may may I throw a little <laughs> You're going fact, to anyway, little, so little, I want you to go ahead, <laughs> jump right in. Okay, so um, we are uh, projecting, well, the street is projecting, that earnings growth will be 14% in 2011. Here's a little factoid. Crude goods have increased 15.5% year over year. And aren't you a little bit concerned, Don Luskin, that the level of inflation that's out there will, a little, will crimp earnings by a little bit in 2011? And aren't you also afraid that the direction of interest rates might also put a governor on earnings in 2011? A governor well, as, you, as, you, as, you, as, you, as you as you yourself said, uh, Michael, in the first segment, that uh, a lot of that commodity inflation actually produces earnings because there are commodity companies in the S and P 500. As to the rise in interest rates, look, we can, if you want, we can go back to Mar uh, January 2009 when the two-year was trading at two percent. Boy, wouldn't that be great for the economy? Uh, no, that's when we were looking at the next Great Depression. So get down on your knees and thank well, well, living God <coughs> that we're having rising well, interest rates because that is. Do you know that a five and a quarter percent Fed funds target rate is extremely low, historically speaking? So are we going to just hyperinflate like we did in 2006 and 2007? And are we going to kill the middle class like we did back then and gender bubble hey, look, after just, bubble? Uh, let's, oh, see, let's, let me, let's, is, let's decompose this. Five and a quarter percent is yeah. extremely low on a historical yes, basis. Go back on, and look on, at what, on what planet, Michael? Uh, uh, look we, at we're talking Saint, about Earth, right? Okay, Earth, Saint, the, go, Don, I want to ask you, I want the vi listeners to go, I want to put you on the spot here, go to the same St. Louis Research uh, uh, website and put up a chart of the effective federal funds rate from the, when we broke the gold window in 1971 to the year 2000, and you'll see that five and a quarter was a floor for the Fed funds rate back up, uh, during that time. And so your point is? My point, point is, is that we have a lot of work to do from the Federal Reserve to try to squash the inflation that he's engendered. All right, let me bring Tom back in. Tom, I want you to answer Michael Pento. Are you worried about ex extra easy money? Are you worried about rising commodities? Are you worried about rising inflation as derailments and destroyers of this stock market rally. You know, I'm not, Larry. I mean, let's look at the bear case for a second. The bears have been talking about their case since Dow 10,000. Well, you know what? We broke Dow 11,000. They've been talking about their case since Dow 11,000. We're approaching Dow 12,000. Why? Because 70% of all the earnings in the S&P 500 were fantastic last quarter. 75% the prior quarter. And I believe you're going to see the same results this quarter, which is going to push this Dow but, to all-time highs. All so right, I'm but, very bullish. But 
rising so stocks what? doesn't necessarily mean more rising stocks. I mean, after all, we have to be careful. We have to look at this in a sober way. Let me ask sure. you another question, Tom. What about Mr. Pento's concerns overseas, with which I generally share? You do have rising inflation and interest rates in China and India and Brazil and, and Chile. Chile. And Might that all, not derail right? this, too? We're all part of a global economy. Now, we Correct. like to look at the good, but that's the not-so-good overseas. Is that stuff going to catch up to us? You know, I, I don't believe so, Larry. I'll tell you one thing. I think there's more opportunity here in the United States. Could the Chinese economy pause a little bit? Yes, but that makes all for more people to be more confident in our economy. It's all about investor confidence. And right now, we've got to follow the trend. Everyone is confident in our system. We've got to keep pushing that forward. And the Don Luskin, I'm going to give you the last word because I just want a quick comment. President Obama, who has now participated in lower tax rates and says he wants to cut spending, in the Wall Street Journal today, he says he wants fewer regulations. He is now a free market con uh, convert, <laughs> Don Luskin. Do you buy that? Is this trust but verify, or is this more <laughs> bullish, centrist, Clintonista uh, from Obama? Oh, it, it's Clintonista, but that's certainly an improvement over uh, what he's done for the first two years of his disastrous term. You know, it's fantastic. At least he's telling the right lies. You know, like <laughs> in, that editorial, in that editorial today in the Wall Street Journal, he says, oh, of course, I, I exempt from this scathing critique of regulation all the terrible ones I've put in place for the last two years. Those were necessary. Hey, hey let's, tuck, but let's, I suppose let's cut taxes and just keep spending. That's a great plan. We never tried that before, right. have we? Actually, I would just cut taxes. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you very much. Don Luskin, I appreciate it. Michael Pento and Tom Bellessis, thank you very thank much. You, Coming up.